love of my life, can't you see? You gotta like that. I love motivated people out there trying to change their lives. The world needs more of that. Hello everybody! You're probably asking yourself, oh wait a second, that's not a KLR. You're right, down here in South Carolina today it's a little bit nippy. So I broke out the evil HD Motor Company's uh, murdered out black rope glide. Got the windshield and the fairing and the soft lower down there. And heated jacket, heated gloves. I need to get another uh, pigtail to plug into the battery on the KLR so I can wear all this stuff over there. But uh, I got a question for all you, all you guys. All, by the way, hold on. Stop the presses. We have an update. I now have, are you ready for this? 57 subscribers. That's right, 57. The last video I put out, the 3x3 challenge, I had 20. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you for all the feedback and the thumbs up and all the questions. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So anyways, thank, oh yeah, by the way, thank you if I already say thank you again. I've got a question for all you guys. What kind of helmets do you guys wear? Oh, look at that muddy brown water. What kind of helmets do you wear? Do you wear them ADV helmets or a modular helmet with a flip stop or a motocross helmet or do you wear a uh, full face? Me personally, I wear a uh, HJC R411 full face. It's pretty lightweight, extremely comfortable. Summertime, I open up the vents, it moves a lot of air. Uh, but I'm looking for something a little bit different. I wish Sometimes I wish I had a visor to block out the sun. Go ahead and comment down below and let me know what kind of helmet you guys got. Haha, <laughs> NWA, just don't bite it. If you guys have never listened to that song, check it out. It's funnier than hell. Now today I want to talk about, there's been a lot of talk online about people wanting to get into motorcycle camping. About all the stuff that they need and all the stuff they need to bring with them. Stuff they want to get. I went down that rabbit hole about four years ago, five years ago. I got into the motorcycle camping. I went on YouTube and I watched all these channels and all the stuff on motorcycle camping. And all this stuff to bring with you and all this bullshit that everybody bought. Yep, I'm one of them. I'm not going to admit. I went out and I bought all the same shit, but the first time I went motorcycle camping, I was loaded for bear. I had everything you could ever want. I'll tell you something, I bet you I didn't use half of it. It was a waste of money. I didn't need it. I didn't use it. I just, I just didn't need it. So as I kept motorcycle camping and going more and more, I started shedding all this stuff. Well, I didn't need this last time I've been three or four times I've never used this, this is staying home. When you're out riding, and you're traveling, you're gonna stop around noon to get gas. And what's normally around a gas station is something to eat. It might be a McDonald's, a Burger King, or the local restaurant, or the diner, or whatever. But it's something to eat. And it's the same thing at the end of the day. Whenever you check into one of these motorcycle campgrounds or a normal campground, usually there's somewhere to fill up your gas tank and get something to eat, get some supper, and you're not that far away from the campground most of the time. Or even a campground that even has a restaurant or serves hamburgers or something at it. So I'll tell you what, the first time I went camping, I brought all I brought eggs and and single packs of Spam, and noodles in a bag, and mountain house meals, and all this bullshit, and I didn't even use any of it. Because along the way, I just stopped and got something to eat. I didn't need any of it. I would suggest bringing like a dehydrated meal for supper, and maybe another one for breakfast. You're running late or something, and you can't find anything, at least you got something. But I'll tell you one lesson that I learned about bringing all that damn food with me and doing all that cooking. But it's the one thing that a lot that everybody that nobody tells you about the damn dishes. You gotta wash your dishes. You think it's just it's like being at home. I would much rather go into a restaurant and pay somebody 
to cook me a meal and then get up and walk away and leave a pile of dirty dishes. I ain't got to mess with it. I ain't got to pack it. I ain't got to wash them. You know what I mean? I brought a headlamp. I brought a flashlight. I brought all this shit with me. And you know what? The one thing that's the one thing that you need and the only thing you need is a good quality headlamp, something to wear on your five head. And I also bought all that damn cookware sets. I started out with a cheap ass aluminum cookware set from from uh, Walmart, useful as a screen door on a submarine. I tell you, son, that metal is so thin, it doesn't conduct any heat, and all it does is get hot in the middle. It burns everything. Everything you put in that frying pan, it burns. That's why I just tr I just eat out, man. I just eat out. It's so much easier. You ain't got a, you ain't got all that mess and silverware and pots and pans that you gotta wash and all that food and it's just you don't need it, man. Now I brought a ca a camp chair, one of those chairs is made out of tent poles, got the bungee cord in it. It rolls up and you put it in a bag. You stuff it in your saddlebag or whatever. Another thing I left, I leave at home that I don't ever use. What's the one thing that every campground has? A uh, picnic table. I found myself sitting at the picnic table. I didn't. I never even used the damn chair. Took up all that room. What a waste of space. I just, I never used it. I mean, if you're gonna go out in the middle, blast off and go out in the middle of the woods where there is nothing like that. Okay, I can understand that. That was another thing that was a waste. So the cookware set and the camp chair, total waste of money in my opinion. You don't need it. I have that little $15 Stanley stainless steel cup and a little backpack and stove with a, with a stainless steel mug. And that's just mainly to boil water. Uh, I do bring like a lasagna, mountain house meal, and a uh, like a gravy and biscuits for in the morning. That's just strictly backup. I mean, if I can't find something to eat, or I'm nowhere around anything, at least I got something with me. But as far as packing all this food and all this shit, you don't need all that. Don't don't skimp out on your tent. Try and just buy a good quality one the first time you buy one. Save up your money and buy a good one. I got a Kelty uh, two-person dome tent. It's got a vestibule on the front of it. I started out with a ground tarp. Well, a plastic tarp you buy at tractor supplier or wherever. Uh, it's kind of hard to keep that folded up underneath the tent because if it rains, it's going to collect all that rainwater and guess where that rainwater is going to go? Yeah, trust me, I know. I ended up buying it, so I got a Kelty two person dome tent and I also have the uh, Kelty ground tarp made for my tent. They're the same size, I don't have to worry about nothing no more. Air mattress, I have a insulated air mattress that I sleep on. I started out using a air mattress from a swimming pool, uh, just like one of those little thin ones that you lay on when you're floating in the water. It worked pretty good, but it wasn't insulated. I don't care how damn warm it is outside. When you lay down on that ground at night, that ground is like a sponge. It's gonna suck all the damn heat right out of your body. You don't have enough blankets to stay warm. You'll freeze your ass off. You'll wake up three o'clock in the morning. So uh, if you get yourself an air mattress, get one that's insulated. Trust me, you'll thank me on that one. So get yourself a good tent, a good air mattress. Uh, I'm still on the search for a good sleeping bag that's not big and bulky. Microfiber uh, bath towel. You can get them on the internet. They're all over the place. Uh, I think the one I got is like probably two foot wide and like four foot long. It's a bath towel, but it's made out of microfiber. It's not a. Uh, it's not made out of cotton. The thing dries pretty fast. A pair of shower shoes, flip flops, whatever you want to clog things. Some shoes that got the holes in the bottom of them. You know the things that women wear. What the hell are those things called? That's about it, man. That's really about all you really need. So the only advice I can really give you is start out as what you want to call a minimalist when you go camping for the first time. Uh, just bring your tent, your sleeping bag, your air mattress, and your ground tarp. You know, the, the very basic minimum that you need, the very basic minimum, go out, go camping. Load it all up in the back of your motorcycle. 
go for a ride, pull back in the house, pull in the backyard, and pretend you're going to go camping for the night. And go camping for the night, but do it in your backyard just to see what you really, really need. You'll be surprised. Man, I don't need this. I don't need that. I brought this and I never even used it. You're going to run into a lot of that. I know I did. I got one of those uh, plastic tote bins. I keep all my camping gear in, and I bet you half of it, it's half full of shit that I don't even use. I broke uh, 900 miles on the KLR yesterday. When I get close, I got another thousand miles to go. Be on the lookout for a 1,000 mile review of the KLR by a Harley Davidson rider. Does that thing stink? Yeah, buddy. Cruise control, you gotta love it. I gotta get some of this on the KLR. I'm gonna uh, end this video right here. I just want to say thank you for everybody for watching from the beautiful state of South Carolina. Please like and subscribe, and I will catch you all on the flip side. Peace.